how serious should we take ourselves as artists? You're about to get a rediscovery and appreciation of nature, spinning helicopter pigeons and a whole lot of penguins. <laughs> this is Humans Behind Art and this time we have as a guest Lonnie or Lionel Ziblatt and he's a somewhat schizophrenic musician let's say but let's let him introduce himself. My name is Lonnie Ziblatt and I'm a schizophrenic uh, multi-genre uh, composer. Uh, schizophrenic because I am multi-genre. It means that I write in different styles of music. And for the people who listen to my more poppy indie folk songs, I'm Loni, Loni Ziblatt. And for people who listen to my chamber music, I'm Lionel Ziblatt. So I have my instrumental music under Lionel Ziblatt and my songs under Loni Ziblatt. I used to be a progressive rock musician. I had a band called Modest Midget. Now I write anything from chamber music to orchestral choral music, music for TV. I also write songs and some instrumentals for my own inspiration. You do a lot of things. I took a look at your, your website earlier. It was It's super interesting to, to see those very different um, styles directly next to each other. And I really understand this schizophrenic that you mentioned there. It is a lot to take, I think. Huh? Yes, definitely. In the beginning. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's, it's, it's super interesting and I find it fascinating. There are two videos that we shared of you, two, two pieces, um, Kingdom of the Penguin and Stuck. I was watching those videos and it was just so much fun to to watch it and uh, I was super looking forward since then already to get to talk to you so I'm super happy that it worked out one question that I have is in in this side of your schizophrenic personality how how serious do you take yourself as uh, everything else in a good composition and I think a good work of art it's about finding a balance rather than choosing sides at least for me, it's like that. I like the variety. I like I like the polarity. Of course, we're we're going crazy in in the Kingdom of the Penguins video. <laughs> yes. But um, you know, if you if you're a real music aficionado, you notice that there's a lot of skill and work behind it, and everybody's uh, yeah. quite serious. So, in this sense, for example, you could say we all took great efforts to do something well. Mm. And then when it all flows, the piece, the composition, the mood also lends itself to to uh, to be to fool around also. And actually, yeah. the, it was a viola player that started it. I I was very strict with myself. I'm very, I'm a uh -huh. perfectionist. I recorded everything and f shot it live. It was very important for me that what's on the video is really me playing live, which means, you know, sometimes you have to make 20, 30 takes before you yeah. have the, you nail it. And <laughs> Una, the viola player, he just uh, nailed it one take. And then a week later, he, say, he, he said, oh, a week later, I'll mime a video. So he was just fooling around dancing and just <laughs> looked so awesome. Yes. And suddenly all of us had to compete with him. And all of us had to think of something. So uh, I, I actually re-recorded some takes <laughs> because I refused to mime. So it just happened. But it, it's also the character of the music and what brings out in each one of us. Each one of us responds differently, you know. The drummer is also uh, has a very particular sense of humor. So yes. he did it his way. Una did it his way. I'm. Uh, I did my way. I, in this sense, I was more, more focused on to get, getting the music right. It was very important for me because yeah. I, I don't consider myself a virtuoso player. So it was very tough to play. One question that I have to ask you is what is re your relationship with penguins? Uh, <coughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think I have any relationship with them. I on, only have these two pieces. That, I mean, uh -huh. this song and this piece in my whole yeah. repertoire that have anything to do with penguins. To be frank, I, th I thought it was kind of a klezmer style piece. Mm -hmm. uh, people yeah. who really know better told me it's actually a little bit more Romanian Hungarian folklore than klezmer. So be it. I wrote this piece for a famous ensemble in the Netherlands called the Netherlands Blazes Ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big woodwind ensemble uh, and they love 
playing world music and this kind of music and I just th wrote this for them. I think the original title was a little traditional but not too much. Anyway, so and, and I got a call and they said that this doesn't sound ethnic enough. And because they know my background, you know, I, I was born in Argentina and I'm Jewish. I grew up in Israel and he said, why don't you give it something more ethnic, uh, something with your background? Like, and I felt <laughs> like, oh, I'm being uh, put a little bit in this. Into I'm the box. To, <laughs> yes, it will probably sell better if I show my Jewishness. And anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so I thought, okay, let's go for it. Uh, I, I can give it any ethnic name from my background I want. I asked and he said, yes. I said, well, I'll go for the Argentinian one and I chose the penguins. I had nothing to do with penguins. I just thought, uh, just, just thought the fact that it's not related made it funny, but it does fit it somehow, I thought. Years later, I recorded this song, Stuck. And when I finished recording, that happened twice, happened to me with two separate songs, that I finished recording and I saw images in my mind. I thought, I, this needs a video. I got very lucky. I suddenly found a budget and I just allowed myself to go to Argentina and shoot some penguins. Nice. A video shooting. <laughs> just to, that I'm not being Just strange. to be clear. <laughs> the fascinating thing about them is because I, I had to discover them is that actually there's a lot of uh, companionship and, and uh, warmth. Hmm. Penguins choose partners for life. So I found myself actually shooting uh, penguin couples yeah. and it's so over obvious that they're together and they're uh, I don't know maybe anatomically you could say they're silly birds and in Argentina they also call it like pájaro bobo which means a stupid bird but I see a deep connection there I see these couples yeah. standing and it feels like they really have something going there among them yeah. I mean, maybe that's one revolution we're going through at this in this era now. Uh, you can look at animals and you realize you're looking at somebody and it's not yeah. just uh, a bunch of cells. <laughs> Apart from the penguins, I also shot... Uh, I'm always confused how you call it in English. In, in, in Spanish, you call it uh, lobos marinos, uh, which is sea wolves, but that doesn't exist. It's sea lions, I think. A sea lion, I think. Yes. So there's a there's a shot there with a um, male and a female, uh, kind of. I don't know if they're flirting or just kind <laughs> of. Uh, they have an attitude. It's obvious that he. Uh, they're enamored with each other, and she's like oh, like this, and he's like. <laughs> and. Uh, I was amazed to catch that, and so and that's us actually, actually also in the in the clip. What I did have to take out from the clip is, but that while they were very slowly approaching each other, and it seemed like they were going to give each other a French kiss at some point. <laughs> another sea lion crawled from the water. He went up, and he just came off the water, and it was just a coincidence. And he just stood b between them. He got too close and the other lion was like... <laughs> so it was really... He was upset and he was like... like He really uh, misstepped there. It was funny to see and... Um, it, it was just not relevant for the video clip, so I took it out, of course. <laughs> but it, it was a discovery. Just by needing these images, I suddenly realized what I was looking for was to see the love between these animals. And it's... It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, just the realization of it's it's not just an animal, but it's it's a it's a being that is having it's probably its own thoughts. It's a, maybe has its name internally as well, and uh, is being aware of himself, herself. I don't know. Yeah, it was a very special experience, and mm -hmm. and mind you, I'm a very timid person. I don't I don't travel a lot in nature, so there was uh, this was. This took a lot of courage to do and I felt and I, I don't really know how to shoot videos professionally so mm. I was quite nervous there I was quite often thinking what the hell am I doing I'm, I'm insane <laughs> I had a little bit of money and I'm just spending it all on this but uh, I don't regret it. there's some things that happen to you that um, soften you and uh, one one big big event is when if you have uh, if you have a child for example 
for sure. Uh, but there's the other side of the coin, and that is when you lose a parent, for example. So in, mm. in my case, I, I uh, saw both my parents uh, wither away mm. in the last 10 years. And even though it's a, you know, it's a natural thing, it's still something that lives, leaves an imprint and you do, you do look at life differently. So you're more appreciative of uh, certain things and you also know what's important. And one of the yeah. very, very crucial, absolute important things is, uh, whenever there's a p p opportunity for warmth and intimacy, uh, with friends or with people in general, that's gold. Yeah. So, uh, so I think with that attitude, of course, uh, if you get exposed to an, an animal, you look at it differently. It, it, it's a lot is in the eye of the beholder. You can, you can go to the zoo and see an animal and think it's funny, but you, you can go there with a different mindset and actually realize that he's actually upset because it's, mm. uh, you know, in a cage or something. Mm. So. A lot depends on how you look at things. I can go uh, and listen to a music piece or look at a painting and depending on my own state of being on that very day, it's completely different how I perceive it. And the same as well the other way around when I'm on stage performing. I am always different and the audience themselves, they're very different each performance as well. So I have to have to play differently as well to, to tell the same thing in a way in my performances. And doesn't it happen to you that you listen to a, a song in one mood and it makes you joyful and in a different yeah. mood, it makes you cry? Definitely. The same song, same recording. Yes. You know? Definitely. It's always beautiful to, to have those moments to me as well, to realize and to, to have those different experiences with those different songs. It adds something to the song and uh, it creates a new memory connected to that day when I was listening to it and the reaction that I had to it on that day. It's become sort of a diary to me sometimes with some songs. Yeah, we, we, do, we always record music. It, it gets all kinds of songs, sometimes just a very silly pop song. Yeah. Uh, can be very emotional, nostalgic if you listen to it 30 years later and you remember uh, I don't know, a parent that passed away or a girlfriend uh, that you had. And maybe at that point it looked, seemed like a disaster and looking yeah. back, you, you see it in perspective and you realize that actually it had a lot of value in, in ways that at that point you couldn't imagine. Yeah. The reality in general is very dynamic and you can look at it from different angles. So it mm. definitely works of art as well. Yeah. Now, as we had on the topic of emotions and those kind of things, um, as you do film scoring as well, I can imagine that it's there very much important as well then to to look at what is happening in the video and then to create something in sound to to work with that and to make it stronger or to to create those memories that people already have. How do you how do you approach a task uh, a task like that? That's something that I'm very slowly getting into mm -hmm. and becoming very passionate about it. I, I really love that field. I still feel it's very challenging mm -hmm. because, uh, it's, it's every time the same story. I get a scene in front of me and you have the dialogue and maybe the edit is perfect. The shoot, the, the shot is perfect. The actors are perfect. But something, something's wrong. Something's missing, and you're wondering what, what is, what's going on here? You don't understand <laughs> it. And at some point, I realize it always happens to me. Oh yeah, there's no music. Yeah. But as, and I, I feel as a watcher that I'm missing part of the emotion. Often, you know, if it's a documentary, that's something else. The music uh, is not supposed to implant an emotion in a documentary. It's supposed to help you go. Yeah. It's supposed to help the flow, but if it's a drama or a sci-fi or a horror movie or whatever, then the music is extremely important. Mm. And I find it, uh, shockingly difficult in the beginning. I'm always, I, I start tearing my hairs away. <laughs> I think, how do I approach this? What do I do with this? And the only input you have, except for the, the scene 
is the director. Different directors have different tastes and different takes on music. Mm. So you completely depend on, on their taste, what they want and what they like. So it's, it's challenging. I can imagine. So some, some things, some things are more generic. You know, if I, I, I also did commercial stuff for TV, which is less fun, but it, it pays the rent. Yes. <laughs> and, and then you just follow a trend, yeah. you know? Uh, but, uh, no, if it's a movie and it's, and you're working one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's, yeah, it's quite an adventure. Do you want that this, that it becomes easier or, or do you enjoy this, this challenge exactly about it? Well, I'm pretty, uh, terrified I, I it would be nice if it if i met of it if, if, if i'm a little bit more relaxed uh -huh. of of course i mean you're right uh, if it becomes like automatic i i think i sense what you mean that there might be a danger that you you lose some mm. of the excitement but uh, but, I, but case... i think you actually answered already onto it quite perfectly with with you you spoke about your attitude towards it and wanting to be more relaxed so that it's not okay it's not supposed to become easier but it's just about good I, I enjoy this difficult work but um i do not want to be so uh, pressed about it somewhat yes well i'm still there so that yeah. uh, that's one reason why i i, I, I probably like it because it's something i'm still mm -hmm. nervous about and it's still challenging so yeah for me that's that makes it interesting but yeah I, it, it would be nice to know okay i can do this i can do that but then yeah. go for something interesting then uh, after a lot of work you are you're sitting in front of a finished thing how is that feeling oh it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> yes there there are some occasions that i watch it and i regret yeah. something i think oh man that that wasn't good or mm -hmm. i don't like the mix it's unavoidable yeah. but most of the time don't forget it's a job and it's a client and yes. if he's satisfied and it's already a big part of the of the job it's, it's very different from than writing something out of sheer inspiration there's a nice moment by the way i'd like to point out in the in mm -hmm. this uh, stuck in the video because um, i was with this beautiful uh, tourist guide who's, she was already retired who's been living there in the peninsula valdez in argentina for 16 years and she, she stayed there because she became friends with an orca. Mm -hmm. And uh, for many years, she would go down the coast and she would clap and the orca would come. Wow. Because orcas have fantastic uh, ears. They recognize her clap, but they're also very, very, very social, socially advanced uh, yeah. animals. She w would translate to me sometimes what I would see. I saw there was, there's a shot there. You just have a, a penguin sitting in the water or kind of between the water and land alone and two penguins are walking and they pick him up and say come come with us <laughs> it's okay i didn't even see it until she pointed it out to me they feel each other they're like uh and of course you know looking i think looking at animals we can learn a lot about how to yes take a notch down just take it easy you want to learn to meditate look at a happy dog <laughs> in the garden you know they're, they're yes. just, there's, you don't need an ashram. That's just look at your dog. <laughs> the instrumental was written before I even ever thought mm. of, uh, making videos of penguins. It was just a funny name I thought of. And, and it's funny that when I was doing this video, I suddenly realized I had some footage from the peninsula of just, a like a gang of penguins walking and they just <laughs> fit perfectly the groove the, the artist, the, the yeah. drummer was playing boom, da, bum, da, bum, da, <laughs> just look like, uh, and I thought that was, oh, that's awesome. Nice. It's, it's funny. You see how it, I could use the ukulele also, like in the other song, and then it looked like cute yeah. because they're struggling to walk. And here it looks like they're a bunch of, you know, a penguin mafia or something. It's really <laughs> funny. Indeed. And then also in the, in the other video, the, the, the pigeon just spinning was, was beautiful. <laughs> well, I did do some editing work there. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but, uh, but she, she was, the original was stupid enough to spin a few times. And I was wondering <laughs> why, why does she do that? And <laughs> she sp spun back and I, and I thought, wow, let's use it. Let's, let's speed it up a little bit. Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs>
helicopter. So, uh, <laughs> and that was in that was shot in Buenos Aires. Like it's not just a typical pigeon; uh -huh. it's a Buenos Aires pigeon. You know, you know, with all the <laughs> wild, filthy, filthiest sense of humor that a Latin American can have in her mind. That's it for this episode of Humans Behind Art. The full uncut version of the interview is of course available on our Patreon page to our lovely patrons, without whom we would not be able to do this. So if you like what we do and want to support us in our work and gain some extra benefits along the way, then we would love it if you consider becoming a patron as well. Next week we have a super special episode for you as we got together with a bunch of other artists live here in our new location and we talked about gender, feminism and equality. To not miss out on this beautiful episode, simply subscribe to our channel and do not forget to hit the bell so YouTube notifies you when we come up with a new video. So that's enough for me, see you next week.